Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam, I meet Angie doing political commentary for the media speaks. Gonna give you something that you won't get everywhere else. Uh, I'm gonna give you the no Trump guarantee. Do I still support Donald Trump for president? Yes. If you don't, then fine. Vote for uh, Gary Johnson, uh, who I voted for last time. We've covered the primaries. It looks like Trump is going to get his whatever. We're not covering him tonight. Do I still support him? Yes. But there are other things going on in the world, and we have covered him extensively here. So, we are going to go on with news that is everything but Trump today. 6abc.com, American Mormon in Brussels survives the third brush with terrorism. Now, this is astounding. Like, this is one of the most amazing things you're going to hear anywhere at all. Um, I'm going to talk about just the pure for good fortune here, blessings uh, to the max, AP. The bombs that tore through the Brussels airport Tuesday seriously wounded three Mormon missionaries. I'm going to go screen share for those of you on uh, low def. Those of you on fact cam can see it behind me. The three Utah men serving in Paris uh, were Mormons and were close to the explosion, but the 20-year-old French woman was in a different area of the airport and received minor injuries. The bomb blasts in the Belgian capital killed 34 people, it says, <clears throat> and wounded dozens at the airport and a subway station. Richard Norby, 66, Joseph MB, 20, and Mason Wells, 19, were hospitalized with serious injuries, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints said in a statement. They were at the airport, it says, with Fanny Rachel Crane, the... Uh, uh, Montelio France, who was on her way to an assignment in Cleveland. Well, he's been close to... Lampson has said that Wells was close to two other major terrorist attacks. <clears throat> he went to the Boston Marathon in 2013 to watch his mother compete and was a block away when bombs exploded near the finish line. Wells, who has been in Paris for 20 months, also was serving in France when a series of coordinated attacks hit that city last December. He was set to return from the mission in time to start the challenge. So basically, if you see this Wells man, you're going to want to run for your life. Um, no, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that he made it through each time. It was just a, uh, a human interest story that I couldn't pass up. Um, vocal, uh, VocalIV.com. Vocate vo, IV, I guess it would be. First time for them on the show. American skeptical of God, but think that heaven is real somehow. Now this is interesting, because there are lots of people that subscribe to what I call the grab bag religion. And what that is, is take a little bit about this and a little bit about that. And you just kind of make your own fuzzy feel-good religion and think that your fuzzy feel-good God that you created is going to be wonderful to you. Am I a great spokesperson for my religion with his Christianity? No, I'm the worst Christian ever. But <clears throat> there are people now that are thinking they're going to go to heaven even though they don't really follow a religion. It's kind of like someone that says, Oh, but there are many roads to God. Well, it doesn't make any sense. Because if Christ, for instance, says that I am the only way to the Father, and if a Hindu says that there are many gods, while I don't want anything to happen to the Hindu or the Christian, it's common sense that they both can't be right, since they both teach two drastically different things. Well, that's not what we're talking about here either. We're talking about people that think that they're going to go to heaven because it makes them feel good to think that they're going. Why am I reporting on this? Uh, well, because I think it's important to note that we live in a time where everything is sort of the way you hope it is, even if it's painfully not the case. We live in an age of feel-goodism, and if 
whatever it is makes us feel good, then it somehow passes as spirituality, might be another way to put it. Uh, Bernie Sanders still prays. Uh, many of his constituents, uh, probably not, it says. The United States formally separates church and state, but it's hard to deny that America is inundated with religious innuendo. From its controversial Pledge of Allegiance all the way down to its Judeo-Christian courthouse displays, the faith expels legal tender, all of which should be, by the way. <clears throat> Fewer Americans pray or believe in God than ever before, though, according to a new study in the journal Sage Open. Uh, this is particularly bad news because the further a nation gets away from its founding uh, morality, at least to accept <clears throat> as fact to be good to your fellow man, the worse society goes as a whole. <clears throat> Researchers found that the percentage of Americans who claim that they never pray reached an all-time high in 2014, up five-fold since 1980s. Over the same time period, belief in God and interest in sp spirituality appears to be similarly declined, especially among young adults. So they went from believing in a feel-good, puffy, marshmallowy kind of doesn't-it-make-you-happy God that they created in their own heads to simply believing in no one at all. The findings <coughs> suggest that millennials are the least religious generation in memory and possibly in American history. Again, blame everything on the millennials. I'm not someone that thinks that way. I think Gen X has done a very bad job of teaching the fact of Christianity to its children. I think it's done a very poor job there. Um, <clears throat> most previous studies concluded that fewer Americans were publicly affiliating with a religion, but that Americans were just as religious in private ways, when that's no longer the case, it says, especially in the last few years. It says... Um, Throughout the 2000s, studies reportedly and repeatedly found that many Americans had lost faith in religious institutions, uh, and of course, much of that, of course, they heap on to the Catholic Church. Uh, but the new study suggests that Americans have a problem with God, and that our spiritual issues run deeper than paltry mistrust of religious institutions. Yeah, because if you believe in God, then you actually have to believe in good and evil, and maybe you'll be held accountable for something someday, and you don't want to believe it, so you won't. And it just makes you feel good not to, even though facts prove the exact opposite. For the study, researchers pulled 58,893 entries from the GSS, which is a nationally represented survey of U.S. adults. The results suggest a steep decline in the number of Americans who pray, believe in God, take the Bible literally, attend religious services, or are identified as religious. And all factors should have relatively little to do with American skepticism of uh, institutions. So there's your, the graph behind me. Those of you on screen share have it. And this is what's really weird, too, though. Nearly one-third of 30-somethings who matured in the 2000s said they were secular. <clears throat> that means not religious and one-fifth reported that they were not even spiritual, suggesting a decline not only in religious affiliation, but also core beliefs of Generation Y. A decline in religious affiliation and participation has now extended to private practices and beliefs. Now, what's odd here is that, and there's a rundown of the numbers, um, Belief in God and attendance at religious services declined by half, while self-reported spirituality declined fivefold. One odd quirk, Americans have become slightly more likely to believe in an afterlife, even as they are abandoning prayer, belief in God and rituals. In other words, God's going to be nice to you for nothing, as if he was Bernie Sanders. This, too, is perhaps a telling sign of America's <coughs> newfound relationship with old-time religion. It might be part of a growing entitlement mentality, between you say, thinking that you can get something for nothing. And I think that's exactly what it is. Um, bad news. I mean, like I said, as, as that declines, so does uh, goodwill towards men. So does the precepts in the servant of the mount, which even for those of you that don't believe in Christianity, can definitely understand were important in order for society to treat each, each other with some modicum of respect. And I worry that this is going to be, I'm sure it is, a step in the opposite direction. All right, moving on, friends. <clears throat> Mirror.co.uk. A man fitted with bionic penis after a childhood accident loses his virginity 
44 to a sex worker. Now, this man, I, I'm unbelievably happy for. I do wish he could have found somebody to whom he really cared about to have done this with the first time. But he was worried that it wasn't going to work properly, and of course the first time it didn't. We'll get to that in a second. And then he wouldn't be comfortable. So the way he did it is not as immoral as you would think. I mean, you can't even pretend to be in his shoes. So, I mean, I'm not going to judge the man. I'm happy for him. But odd story. Uh, a man who lost his penis in a childhood accident <clears throat> finally lost his virginity at the age of 44. You're older than me. That'd be awful. Mohammed Abad has a 70,000-year-old bionic penis and tested it for the first time with a sex worker, Charlotte Rose. I guess he rose. A security guard from Ed Merle said it was great. Yeah, I've been waiting for this day since I was 18, but now a big burden is off of my back and I'm so happy. A big burden is also off of his front. Mohammed, known as Mo, was lucky to survive, it says, after he was a run over and dragged 600 yards, uh, that is six football fields for you Russia fans, when he fell into the road during a snowball fight at the age of six. After the accident, doctors attached a makeshift fleshy tube, but it wasn't until 2012 that the NHS was able <clears throat> to fit him with an eight-inch state-of-the-art bionic penis. So yes, he is eight inches. It took surgeons at University College London three years to, mount, to mold Mohammed's new wang using skin taken from his arm. <clears throat> he got to hand it to him. It was two tubes which inflate to give him an erection when he presses a button on his testicle. <clears throat> Unusual story, friends. There he is. I'm happy for him. Um, he had to wait to lose his virginity because it was only recently that it became fully functioning. This would be awful. Charlotte, 35, got in touch with Mo after hearing about his plight and asked her to be part of his first sexual experience. He wanted someone who was willing to accept him the way he was. I, who, I don't blame him. He says, I'm a learner. I've got plates. I didn't want to go in all guns blazing and make an idiot of myself. So they met for the first time in a central London hotel and spent a couple days getting to know each other before having the deed. The setback saw, a setback saw his uh, bionic penis malfunction with one side of the pump failing to inflate properly on the big night. So it's good that he, you know, it wasn't like with somebody he was crazy about. He said it was frustrating, but he waited 20 years, so it didn't hurt to wait another day. <clears throat> the following evening, everything went smoothly, and when Charlotte saw it for the first time, she was silent, and he said he was worried, but she said, it's incredible. She normally charges 160 euros, but did it for free. Friends, there's a picture of it online. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but come on. Sometimes you need a story that's just, that's just out of the ordinary uh, to break the monotony. Otherwise, I mean, you're going to hang yourself. Democrat bad, Republican good, to quote uh, Savage. All right, friends, StickerJunkie.com is what's bringing this show to you. And I mention that because if you go to StickerJunkie.com, get your stickers made. If you know what you want, you can upload the pictures, and they'll do a remarkable job. If you don't really know, they will help you. Call them, ask for David Lake. But do yourself a favor. When you check out, make sure you type in correct views or the correct views in the uh, checkout, because you're going to get a savings, like a nice savings. Um, put in correct views. Put in the correct views. They're helping the show out, and you know what? They do amazing work. Look at the work. See, right? The I scuff the sticker, but you can see beyond that that it looks amazing. And uh, make sure you let them know that you heard about it from the correct views. You'll be glad that you did, friends. Uh, moving on, I am swarmed with dumdies. <laughs> Cap of the Month Award Show. Got some of But I am swarmed, as it were, with more dumbies than I could ever, 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 ever get to. So I'm going to end it with three absolute idiot stories. And if you think these are dumb, you have no idea. These are the ones that didn't win the Dunce Cap of the Month award. The shows we have, the, the, the idiots we have coming up on the next Dunce Cap show next month is just through the roof. Um, again, April Fool's Day, too. You're going to find all the characters for those of you that follow the show. We're going to have Buddy Puff and all the characters coming back. 
Um, Louder with Crowder. He, uh, quickly, my favorite journalist today is Stephen Crowder. I, the man is par excellence. Well, listen to this. It says, watch, an experiment in these Iowa kids with guns, and the results are actually awesome. Um, this goes against everything the anti-gun people tried to prove by doing this. The anti-gun left, it says, seems to think that the way to protect kids is to hide guns from them and make it harder for the law-abiding parents to get them. However, as you'll see in the video below, from Iowa, that actually leaves kids more at risk. Watch this anti-Second Amendment propaganda experiment. It's gone terribly wrong for the media in 10 seconds flat. So, uh, <clears throat> again, it, they, they took it off of YouTube, as you can see there, because uh, they were ashamed at how badly they looked. That's why they get one of the three dundies of the day. Lieutenant Aaron McLeland said it was a typical behavior for young kids' curiosity. Everything is a toy in their world unless we educate them and let them know that sometimes it's not. Now, <clears throat> in this entire 2 minute 37 long report, only 10 seconds was dedicated to this very important footnote, and it's yet another reason as to why you should never trust the media to report on studies or experiments for you. At the very end of the dramatic video, it was seven minutes, after the image kids holding the gun on the mom's emotional reaction, the reporter shared a compelling caveat regarding the two children in the room who didn't pick up the gun. Those two children are the ones who have had guns in their homes, and their parents have talked extensively about the guns before, and their curiosity was gone. In other words, the problem wasn't whether or not the kid found the gun as they tried to portray when they did this, but no, no, it was, the, the point actually was if you teach your children the importance of guns, what they are, how they're to be respected, and how they are to flee and not touch them, it works. Proving that gun education works more than hiding the guns and leaving yourself open for criminal attacks. And this is true, because I grew up in a home where my dad owned a handgun, and I'll tell you what, he was completely correct. Uh, I would have never touched one. Pamela Geller, Knife Jihad, Muslim shouting Allah, stabs two Canadian forces at Toronto Military Recruitment Center. A Muslim paper in Windsor, Canada, used an editorial to declare knife attacks in Israel a sacred duty of jihad. They will declare this as a sacred duty as well. So why is this getting the dunce cap? Wait, a dum dumdy, I should say. Wait. Toronto police chief are looking into whether a double stabbing at a military recruitment center could be linked to terrorist activity. You know, he shouted all out for goodness sake. If it isn't terrorism, then what is? So let's pretend that a nutcase Christian, and I am a Christian, but I understand we do have nutcase Christians, they take a knife and they they go in and they kill somebody because they have, uh, you know, an abortion and they, they're doing it for Christ. The paper would be splattered, as it should be, with condemnation for this man. However, because it's Allah, Allah, we're going to give it the benefit of the doubt that even though they were praising Allah when they stabbed people, it might not have anything to do with terrorism. No, no, not a chance. Police Chief Mark Saunders said a man walked into the center in northern port of Toronto around 3.30 p.m. Monday, pulled out a knife, and attacked a uniformed Canadian Forces member. Was this the work of a refugee? Then the chief also said the suspect uttered certain comments that are of concern, but declined to say what they were. And there's an update to this. The uh, <clears throat> police also told the son that he appears to be of Middle Eastern descent and was presenting himself as Muslim. But all of that needs to be confirmed. So, you can chant Allah and stab somebody, and they, they'll they check to see if just maybe this could be terrorism. <laughs> this is the stupid, stupid world that we live in, and we've got one more idiotic, stupid story to get to to round it out. Let me go back to uh, screen share for those of you on low def. Those of you on fact cam, you'll see it behind me. Gateway pundit Jim Hoft, Sasha and Malia wore $20,000 dresses to the state dinner, paid for by who? By you, the taxpayers, by me. $20,000. Look 
at these dresses that these this malignant family has leached off of the American taxpayer. It says, you just gotta love the hypocrisy of the left. Yahoo Politics sourced this out for the first time since being elected. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau visited the United States. The quite good-looking Canadian delegation was welcomed to Washington, D.C. by President Obama and his family at the state dinner at the White House. It says the event wasn't just a first for Trudeau. Sasha and Malia Obama made their state dinner debut as well. When I was first elected to this office, Malia was just 10 and uh, Sasha was 7. Now they've grown up so fast, the president said, showing off uh, how Malia was going off to college and he was starting to choke up. <clears throat> well, you're going to choke up. You're going to choke up your dinner. It says what might have uh, made Obama choke up was looking at the price of his daughter's dresses while their mother opted for a custom strapless number from one of her favorite designers, Jason Wu. Her daughters went with Naeem Khan, Malia 17, who was seated next to Saturday Night Live's Lauren Michaels and actress Sarah O, oh, wore a strapless veil gown with crystal beading from the pre-fall 2015 collection. The 100% silk piece is no longer available for purchase. No, it's, I guess it's been sanctified. But is originally retailed at $17,990. The embellished piece didn't need any more bling, so she went without jewelry. How very kind of her. Malia blew out her hair in loose waves and had subtle cat and nude lips. So there you go. That's your tax dollars, hard, hard at work. Aren't you glad you got to pay for that wonderful experience for them? That's more than many people listening to this show make in an entire year. That's, that, that's what we live under, friends. Uh, if you're listening to the correct views, do me a favor. Share the video so that I'm not out here doing this for nothing. How about that? Hit, hit subscribe. Hit like. If you want to donate to the show, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show, and it costs a fortune to do this. I have guests downstairs here at 420 in the morning. Guests downstairs. And I'm up here doing my show like I always do. So do me a favor. Support the show. And support Change Transportation. Who will give you a ride at fairs? So low you won't believe it. Good night, friends. God bless.